Hi all, here we are for our second podcast for our light and sound uh, unit for our Year 9 Science. Um, today we're going to be looking at sound waves. Um, sound waves differ um, from electromagnetic waves in the fact that they require a medium for the wave to travel through. So as I spoke about in the last podcast, sound waves are mechanical, so they need those particles to travel through. So the difference between sound waves and electromagnetic or light waves, uh, light in our, um, what we'd be looking at, um, the light from the sun, you know, gets here very, very quickly, but the sound from the sun simply can't travel through the vacuum of space. So to emphasize that point, um, what I want to do is show you what the last scene of Star Wars would really look like if they had really followed the rules of science. So here we go. Let's watch. Now the reason why you wouldn't hear the Death Star exploding is that there is nothing for those sound waves or compressional waves to travel through. So that's just one of the misconceptions that people have about sound. First of all, it's a mechanical wave, so it requires a medium to travel through. And the medium has particles that can be forced closer together or further apart. So like we spoke about in the last um, podcast, those compressions and rarefactions with the particles. So our compressions are where they've come back to where the uh, particles have been squashed closer together and the rarefactions are where they start to spread apart and that's how the sound moves through. Um, what is it travelling through right now? So me me talking, well it's, it's my vocal cords are vibrating. Um, vibrating the air and the air, is, um, it's vibrating the air molecules um, which is actually vibrating um, the microphone that picks up the sound. So, you know, you can hear me because my vocal cords are actually vibrating and actually making compressions within the air particles. And the microphone picks those up, much like our ear does. Um, if we're talking about water, um, can, can sound move through water? Well, um, it actually moves through sound uh, much more quickly than, um, or sound waves will travel quicker through water uh, because it's more dense, and we'll look at that in the next slide. Um, and if I was to hit down on a railroad track, um, then the, the sound waves would travel very, very quickly through the railway, uh, railway track because it's made out of steel, and steel is a very, very dense medium. So again, it's a mechanical wave, um, and it's compressions that move through that. So if we have a look here, um, we've got our three different particle models, I suppose. You would have done this in year eight. So if we look at this, we've got our solid, our liquid, and our gas. And, um, you know, this goes to why um, sound will move through liquid or, um, or solid uh, quicker than it will at a gas. So we would have done, you would have done this last year. And if I just get rid of my... Um, my face here for a minute so you can see the last uh, thing for the gas. Um, if you have a look at the the gas, you can see that the particles are spread, you know, quite spread apart. So if I've got a sound wave moving from this particle to the next particle, you know, it's got to travel that far to make that particle then move on to the next particle. So the fact that it's got to travel that distance is the reason why it travels slower than what it might do in a liquid. So if we go to the liquid, it doesn't have as far to go to um, vibrate that next particle. Um, so it travels through a little bit quicker. And then if we look at our solids, well, they're all packed in together um, nice and tight. So they don't actually have to move that far to vibrate the next particle, um, which is why in a solid, um, especially like a steel, where the particles are all packed in nice and close together, it doesn't actually take that long um, for sound to travel or vibrate the very next particle. 
Um, so that's why the speed of sound differs in um, different materials. And it's, it's also why sound will travel for further through a solid than it will a liquid or a gas, um, just because of this here. So if we look at how much uh, it only has to travel this little bit here, so um, there's not much energy that's needed to actually move the particle to the next one. Whereas you look at a liquid and a gas, it actually takes that little bit more energy to, to move that particle. So each time that it does that, it actually takes away some of the energy from the sound, which is why it doesn't travel as far in a liquid or a gas. Now this, um, talking about how fast something will move or how fast sound will move through some of these different mediums, it is related to the elasticity of the of the medium itself um, and the elasticity of the uh, or uh, the more elastic a material um, the faster that the sound will travel through and the longer it will travel through and what we mean by uh, the more elastic a material is is the more closely packed together those particles are such as a, a solid with a nicely packed together, as I said, they don't lose as much energy um, and don't require as much energy to vibrate the particle sitting next to them as it does in a liquid and a gas. So, um, you know, the, the more uh, elastic material, the material just basically means the particles are sitting closer together in those, um, those materials. And that's why some solids are more elastic than others. Uh, for instance, you know, steel would be more elastic than wood just because steel has really, really strong bonds between those solids and they're packed uh, between those particles and they're packed in really, really tightly. Um, so they don't actually have to move too far. Um, yeah, too far from one particle to the next. All right, so now we'll look at a couple of figures of um, how fast speed actually, uh, how fast sound actually moves through things. And we've got some examples here of carbon dioxide, dry air at zero degrees. And, and um, it's interesting to note that, um, you know, we've got those at zero degrees because sound will travel through air at uh, different speeds depending on the temperature. Um, <clears throat> and that's something I'd like you to go and um, Google and find out why the speed of sound changes in air. So what's the reason behind it? And remember, um, you know, for for air, for the sound to travel through something faster, there's got to be something that happens to the particles. So you want to find out um, why at zero degrees it moves at a certain temperature and why at 25 degrees it actually moves around about 20 metres a second faster. Um, also, at an altitude of 10 kilometres above sea level, it, it drops its speed by, um, at, and if it's at zero degrees, it drops its speed by about 20 metres per second also. So, you know, why might that be? Why at uh, an altitude of 10 kilometres um, is the speed of sound slower than what it is at sea level? So why is the speed of sound so important? How do we actually use our knowledge of what the speed of sound is? Now, I'm sure everyone's heard of um, you know, sonar and all that sort of stuff that, say, the Navy or the Air, For Air Force might actually use. So they use um, what they know about sound waves and how fast it will travel through a medium um, to locate how far away something might be. So if we have a look at, um, actually have a look at the word sonar, um, that's just the use of reflected sound waves to locate objects underneath the water. And the, um, the word sonar comes from um, sound navigation and ranging. So just taking a couple of letters out of each of those words and that's how we get sonar. Um, and there are a number of animals that actually use a similar type of thing um, to actually get around. Now I'm sure we've all um, heard of you know, or seen bats or you know, some people may actually have a big fear of bats. Um, they use something called echolocation, which is just the use of sound to locate objects by detecting echoes, which is exactly what we use um, sonar for. So um, bats, dolphins actually use the same sort of thing also, um, and whales to a lesser extent. Um, but definitely bats use, uh, they emit little chirps. I'm sure you've heard them of a night when there's a lot of bats around. Um, really high frequency 
um, sounds. A lot of their chirps we can't actually hear because they're um, they're too high a frequency for our ears to actually detect. But um, they send those messages out, and what happens is the sound bounces off the object, and they can um, determine from that how far away an object is, um, and then go and um, go and get that object or eat it or do whatever it is it wants to do with it. Um, another thing that sound waves is used for is uh, ultrasound, and I'm sure we've all heard of ultrasound or um, you know have uh, seen it, especially the new 3D and 4D ultrasound pictures that we can get these days. Um, ultrasound is just sound with frequencies too high for humans to hear. That's all ultrasound means. Just means that. Um, the, the sound wave is actually above what our ears can hear, much like a bat's echolocation. Um, and you can have a look here at some of the, the things that we use ultrasound for. Um, you know, the one that we all know is actually looking at a baby um, inside the, the mother's womb, but we actually use them for other things. Um, metallurgist or um, engineers will actually use ultrasound to detect cracks in um, steel uh, so it's, uh, particularly important in shipbuilding and um, you know building large buildings uh, engineers will go over and check each pieces piece of the the metal that's used in those buildings for the major structural components to make sure they're not weakened by a crack some of the other uses that we have for ultrasound also, and it's not, um, these types of ultrasounds aren't um, echolocation in um, in essence, but they're usually, it's used to remove some cancers, uh, treat an eye condition called glaucoma, shatter kidney stones and gallstones in a, in a process called shockwave therapy, much like the opera singer who's um, breaking that glass when they hit that high note. Uh, it's the same sort of thing that ultrasound gets into those kidney stones and basically shatters them because we've um, given them the right frequency that, that does that. Um, you know, your physiotherapist will also use um, ultrasound in, in speeding up the healing of muscle damage. We can use it to clean surfaces, mix paint, uh, homogenize milk and cut glass and steel. So it can be quite um, uh, quite a powerful tool, uh, thinking that you can cut glass and um, steel with, with sound. So just to go over a few things that um, we've gone over in this uh, video cast and things that we may need to remember. So just remember if you're out in space and um, you need to get in contact with someone else and yell and scream or whatever, well, remember, no one can hear you. Um, there's no particles out in space, so sound doesn't travel through a vacuum, and a vacuum is just something where there's no, um, no particles. So remembering that sound is a compressional wave or a mechanical wave, and it needs those particles to move through. Um, and it moves through those particles in compressions and rarefactions. So compressions where um, <clears throat> the particles have been squashed together and the rarefactions um, come after the, uh, after the uh, compressions. And that is where the particles have spread out a little bit more than what they normally would be. Um, <clears throat> remembering that, you know, the speed of sound differs in uh, different mediums um, and that's because of how closely together or how closely packed that um, the particles are in those different mediums you know for instance you know air and steel it's going to move through steel much much more quickly just because the particles are more tightly packed in in steel and what they are in the air that we um, that are is around us um, Sonar, you know, we use sonar, but it's, um, you know, where we send out a, a sound um, and record how long basically it takes to get back to the place of origin. And that's how we figure out how far away something may be. Um, and we've got things like bats and dolphins that also use echolocation for their own things. Um, and we also use ultrasound, uh, which is just a form of high frequency sounds which is too uh, too high for us to hear um that's it for this one and i'll see you for the next podcast see you later Bye.